It's often said, and it's been said to me quite a lot, you're never too old to learn. And I've always found in gardening that you learn something new every day. And for me, this last summer, I experienced a bit of both. About 10 years ago, I was fortunate enough to be invited to visit a restoration project on Guernsey at Sumaris Park, where they were restoring a walled kitchen garden. And Guernsey is famous for growing tomatoes. It was their main industry for many a year. And whilst I was there, they gave me a packet of seed to come away with, Nisbet's Victoria, which I've never heard of. But they told me it was one of the cultivars that was grown on the island and sent across to the mainland. So I thought I'd try it myself. Problem is, I put the packet away and I didn't touch it for 10 years. And I say, it's a summer of 2022, I decided to open the packet up, sow the seed. Hopefully it would germinate. It's just about on the end of the shelf life of the seed. And I would save some fresh seed from it for the future. Um, I must admit, I wasn't quite prepared for the way that things developed. There were 10 seeds in the pack. So I thought, well, I'll risk five and nothing happens. Then I could sow the others and then that would be that. Um, if it's a total lack of germination, well, I've, I've lost it. Um, so there we go. So I used my usual touch and dab method where you just get a little wooden pointy stick, wet the end and put the seed on with that. And I've been using uh, a soil-based seed compost here and I say just lightly cover it, press it down and then I stand it back in the saucer just to soak up the last of the moisture. Well, I have to say that the germination rate was quite poor. Only three came up and only one of them was usable. But at least I had something to work with, and that's when the fun and games began. The first truss was enormous. There were at least 60, if not 80, tomatoes on there. And when you look closely, you can see it was almost a collection of trusses. So the first thing you have to try and do to get in this well is to go along with a side shoot in. And I like to uh, side shoot when the plants are turgid. Now you can see this one's a little bit soft, and you get a little raggedy edge when you take the the shoot away so what i like to sort of do is to take them when they're about no more than five centimeters long and you've walked them in the morning or they've soaked overnight and the little side shoot is quite fresh and you can just snap it clean out and there's a nice clean wound left behind and it doesn't sort of open up risk and disease the other thing i made in my mind if you i was going to stop this plant at two Trusses. So it's stopping the leader and what happens when you stop the leader is you divert all of the growth back into the plant. My intention was it was growing outdoors. I don't have a greenhouse and I thought I'm not going to be able to ripen any more tomatoes with the size of these trusses outdoors. So what you need to do is to look at the plant and then cut the leaf one joint above the last truss so in this case it's two trusses and then this has been stopped of course what happens then is all the energy is diverted into the other shoots on the plant so it's very important that you keep on top of the plant by removing all the side shoots and any hidden growth at the back that come up um, the plant itself was a little under a meter 36 inches tall uh, but the second truss was nowhere near as large as the first i just put this down to the I can say the variability of the seed and then we move on but the fruits are just beginning to set here and you can see them all over it and one of the things that are beginning to appear now because the plant as I say it bursts into growth everywhere is beginning to develop what are known as running trusses and these are more peculiar to the plant than it being a fault or anything like that and what happens is at the end of the flowering truss you get green growth that comes out, you can just see it, extension growth in the bottom right hand corner. And all you have to do, just like side shooting, is just make sure the plant's well watered, everything is turgid, and you can just snap them out. And then we come out quite easily. Uh, and as I say, it's, it's a, not a fault, but it's, a, it's within the plant itself. So it isn't a question of, is anything you can do to prevent this happening? It's just don't panic and don't worry about it. And it's quite a relaxing, reflective job, really. And whilst I was doing this, one of the things that crossed my mind was, 
this plant's never going to be able to bear all of the tomatoes on these trestles. And if this was a bunch of grapes, I would be setting about thinning them. And so the idea began to develop inside my head was, right, I should let some of the fruits grow and then I will remove them. Because normally I'm quite happy with 10 tomatoes to a tress. And that's more than enough to meet our needs at home and when they're growing up. And this just gives the plants a little shake there to encourage the pollen to move around and set so it increases the crop. And I have to say, at this stage, it was the last thing that I wanted to happen. Well, we move on into August and we had terrific temperatures in the garden. And obviously within the garden itself, you have a microclimate and the temperatures got to be over 40 centigrade. And you can see here the leaves rolling or curling. Uh, and it's a natural reaction to conserve moisture and water within it so the plants roll up. And then in the cool of the evening, they just revert to normal again. There was nothing to panic over. Well, remember the shaky shakes from earlier on, and you can see how effective it is. And I've already removed one truss, and I thought, this is getting ridiculous. So coming back to my, my grape thinning, I thought, rather than thin the fruits, I've just got to remove some of the trusses. So I went around and there must have been, going back to sort of the point of origin, there must have been about five or six I could cut away. And I concentrated on the ones that were actually reddening. I thought I would attend to the green ones later on. And it surprised me um, that every time you cut one off, it seems as if another one had grown to replace, replace it um, almost instantly. So here we go. And I say, I wouldn't normally use a secateurs to cut on the plant because in case you transfer the leaves. But you can see how many there are and you can see them underneath and they're at the back and you cut away. And look at that, it's enormous. And there's still one hidden behind the actual ripening truss itself. And I thought, well, it's just going to have to sort of make a decision on it. So I'm just removing some of the, the lighter grape size ones here, which is sort of act of a desperate man I think but um, you know we'll, we'll see what happens well applying the pruners theory that you can always cut it off but you can't stick it back on I paused for a while looked at it and I thought but it's still overcrowded I'm gonna have to go back and remove that final truss and there we are we just sort of getting around the back you can see as I said before there's almost 10 to a dozen tomatoes there, which is plenty enough. But when you consider we started off with about at least 60, possibly 80, as I said earlier on, um, with some, a massive weight of fruit for a plant to carry. So the decision has been taken, the little ones at the back are going to come away and we'll be left with the one truss because we were moving out of August and into September by now. And I thought, well, there's no way we're going to ripen these up before the colder weather arrives, so you can see the little truss at the back there. Once again, it's exactly the same as before. I sort of bit of token thin to see if it makes it look any better. It doesn't. And you can see there's a misrunning truss at the bottom there. And you know, if you look at the bottom of the, the, the red truss, you can see there are a few dried flowers there. And that's the cause of the heat. You can be very careful when plants where I get warm in the summer that the, the flowers just dry up and drop away. It's a condition that's known as dry set. It's quite common um, in the greenhouses, which is where you must stamp them down in the morning and in mid-afternoon. It gets moisture into the atmosphere and prevents the, the plants themselves from actually just drying up. Um, when I'm dithering and delaying and looking and wondering what to do and what not to, it's one of those shall I, shan't I, and you can see it's carrying too many fruits. So the decision has been taken. It has to come off. Um, I'm just desperately, desperately sort of clinging to the fact that each one I take away will justify keeping the plant. But you can see it's not. It's, it's, it's almost bigger than the parent. It's like a cuckoo in the nest. And there you are. One last snip, it's gone. And the entire plant looks better. Uh, and I have to say, sort of, it was a turning point really with them because the plants then continued to grow and ripen um, quite well. So I'm glad I did it in the end. I was feeding the plants once a week with half strength tomato fertilizer and they just chugged along quite nicely. 
And these are the ones that I took away. And you can see two and a half kilos, five pounds. And I'm not a great fan of tomato chutney. So what I decided to do was to put them into a box. Normally I would use a drawer, but we didn't have one spare. So I just put them into a, a shoe box and then cover them. And a couple of weeks, you see, they turn red. And the thing that surprised me about them was they kept for quite a long while. So, Guernsey Tom, we finally got some food to eat. And looking at them in the dish, I thought, I'm sure I've seen a tomato like this somewhere before. But the proof is in the eating. And they turned out to be quite a pleasant tomato to eat as a salad. You could fry them with the morning breakfast if you wanted to. Or you could make sauce or paste out of them. So really a good all round performing tomato. So I'll certainly grow it again next year. So moving into October now. And you begin to get cold nights. And you think well it's time now to begin to strip the plants down. So the first thing I did was to remove the trestles. To bring them indoors to ripen. But the one thing that did catch my eye when I was uh, cutting them back. Was how healthy the foliage was considering. Uh, it had been grown outdoors. And that particular night, we had a frost, the first frost. So the fruits would have been damaged anyway. So I brought them in, and this is what I normally do, is to put a few ripe tomatoes in with them, then put the green ones, any green ones that you have, in with them as well. And the other thing that I like to use, and it works quite well, is to put a, a ripe apple in there. And that helps, because they say that releases the methane. And I found that it didn't take long for the tomatoes to ripen. Also, they taste just as good as if you take them off the plant themselves. So that's another attribute uh, in their favour. So good on you, Jersey Tom. I said I thought I'd seen them as ever before. And it was, look at this, and it compared quite favourably with Britain's Breakfast. It was part of our collection of tomatoes I grew many years ago. Dio, and thank you for watching. Goodbye for now, but if you would like to see any more, please hit the subscribe and like buttons.